Hello! In this lesson, we're going to talk about principal component analysis, how it's used for dimensionality reduction and what that even is, and also how we use it as a pre-processing step for other machine learning steps. And it looks like we're having a tea break, but we're not. I actually want to use this cup of tea to be able to explain the core principle of principal component analysis. I want you to take a look at this cup of tea, and I want you to observe what you can. I want you to extract features about this cup of tea. What do you see? Well, we can see that it's got a height to it, it's got a width to it, it's got a depth to it. I can tell that it's got some temperature. I don't know if you can see the water vapor coming off the top. Maybe you can't. You can see from reflections in the lights, maybe, that uh, it's, uh, it's shiny. It's got sort of a, a smooth surface to it. So you can extract all of this information out about this cup of tea from those attributes that we've just talked about. But how do you do that? How are you doing that? How are you doing that right now? Well, right now, you're actually looking at an image of a cup of tea. You're looking at it on your phone or a tablet or a laptop, whatever, on the screen, a two-dimensional screen. In fact, you're looking at a two-dimensional array of values, of color values. We could even take the color out of those values, and now you're looking at a two-dimensional array of single-digit values, yet you can still infer, you can still see all of that information about this cup of tea. So we've taken all the dimensions of this cup of tea, both physical and some of the attributes about it, and we've condensed it down to a two-dimensional array of single-digit numbers. And that, in essence, is principal component analysis. It takes a multi-dimensional data set and reduces it down to just the principal components so that you can still see and understand the data but not all of the data is there. Now, to be clear, this is not to do with image manipulation. This is not to do with image recognition. This is to do with taking lots of dimensions of data and compressing it down to just the principal components. So, tea break over. Let's have a look at a graph and have a see how principal component analysis does this in statistical analysis. So let's start off with a two-dimensional data set. And our aim here is to reduce this down to a one-dimensional data set. So we have a graph. We have an x-axis and a y-axis. And our points are spread amongst the two. How can we reduce this down? Well, one way we could do it is just get rid of one of the axes. So if we get rid of y, we condense everything down to the x-axis. Now we've got down to one component of data, just the x but we've just lost a whole bunch of data. We've lost all of the Y data, and the Y data is still important to us, so we're not gonna do that. We don't want to lose a complete component of this data in the process of trying to do our dimensionality reduction. So we have to think of another way of doing this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw a box around the points. And you'll see here that I've drawn the box as short as I can and as narrow as I can in order for it to be able to fit around the points in this particular orientation. And we call this the minimum bounding box. So this is the smallest box that I can draw in this orientation that will contain all of these points. But the key thing I said there is in this orientation. And what principal component analysis will do as a first step is it will look to draw this minimum bounding box and it will analyze the data from different points of view to be able to get this box as small as possible. So if we rotate our points, then we actually find we can draw a smaller minimum bounding box around our data set. Now, if we get rid of that box and we put some axes back on the graph, well, these axes are no longer the X and Y axis as it was when we first had our data set. What we now have is principal component one and principal component two. Now, we still haven't reduced the dimensionality of our data because we still have two dimensions, which is what we started with, but we have analyzed it for its principal components and that's going to allow us to do that in one moment. Before we do that though, I just want to highlight why we have principal component one 
and two, the way around we do have them. Principle component one is where we have the largest spread of data along that axis. So principle component one, it is the principal component. It is the component of the data which influences the positions of the points the greatest. Therefore, it's the widest spread. Principle component two, on the other hand, is the second influence on the data. So this has less influence on the data. And to carry out our dimensionality reduction, we can now get rid of principal component two and consolidate our points down to principal component one. Now this data is not the same as when we got rid of y and condensed the data down to just the x-axis, because at that point we lost all of the y data. But with these points, these points contain both information about x and y. And we've captured that along its principal component. So this has taken a two-dimensional data set and condensed it down to a single dimension data set whilst still maintaining some of the information from both X and Y, both dimensions that were inputs. Now, we are limited here in what we can do in terms of what we can visualize for principal component analysis. And we've just gone from two dimensions to one. Now let's talk about going from three dimensions down to two. So I have a three dimensional axis here. Let's put some data points on this graph. Now, what's the three dimensional equivalent of putting our minimum bounding box around these data points? Well, it's to put a minimum bounding cuboid around our data points. Because there are three dimensions, our analysis works in three dimensions as well. So principal component analysis has found this shape. And the longest side of this shape is principal component one. The next shortest side is our principal component two. And finally, the shortest side is principal component three. Now notice that the cuboid shape that principal component analysis has found is not parallel with either the X, the Y, or the Z axis. It's just a shape almost floating in free space, binding all of our data points together. So to conduct dimensionality reduction, to remove one of our principal components, we need to change our perspective on these data points. And so we'll move into those data points and by doing so, we'll remove principal component three. So now we have a two-dimensional graph which represents the data that we originally put in from three dimensions. In the first graph, we had axes X, Y, and Z. We now have on our new graph, axes principal component one and principal component two. And it's important distinction to make that when we perform principal component analysis, we're not looking to carve out particular features of our data. We're not looking to remove particular features. We are remapping the entire data set down to its core components, its principal components. And we get to choose how many of those principal components we want in our output data set. So we're performing dimensionality reduction. And just a quick note on why we do this and in what circumstances it works best. Imagine that we have a large data set, as we might do if we were putting a table of, say, patient data into a random forest classifier. Now, this data set that we're looking at here, apart from the fact that it's filled with dummy data, isn't actually necessarily that big in terms of data sets that you might experience in the real world. But it's not uncommon in a large data set like this for a whole section of the features of that data to have high correlation with each other. Not exact correlation with each other, but high correlation with each other. Now, if we were to pass this into our random forest classifier, then the random forest classifier will have to go through every single one of these features, measuring each one, seeing where the threshold cutoff should be, and mapping it out to many different branches of a tree. And if the data does have high correlation, then it's going to be doing a lot of work for very little benefit. So dimensionality reduction and using principal component analysis is a type of feature engineering where we can transform our data into a smaller data set 
whilst still maintaining the important aspects or the principal components of the original data. So to be clear, all of the data that we map to in our new data set is a different data set. We have principal components rather than the original features. But when we match it to the label, we've condensed down the amount of work that something like a random forest classifier has to do. So let's summarize. We have a lot of data coming in, which contains lots of features which are highly correlated. When we pass that data onto our model, whichever model it happens to be, it doesn't have to be random forest classifier, we find that the model just doesn't perform. Now, it might not actually explode, but it might not perform very well, or it takes a long time to train because it's churning through lots of data, which has really very little impact on the outcome of the final model. So we introduce into this chain a principal component analysis step where we take our data we pass it to principal component analysis, which can perform the analysis that we've just seen, perform dimensionality reduction on our data, whilst still maintaining what's important about that data, making a smaller, more manageable data set with richer data that passes on to our machine learning algorithm to build a model, and we can use that for inference. And this is an example of model chaining where we use multiple machine learning models in a sequence to process our data and then create a model and then ultimately make inferences about new data. And principal component analysis is very comfortable in this position. It's often used for feature reduction as a feature engineering step. And it works best when the features are strongly correlated. And that's the end of this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to have a go at getting hands-on with principal component analysis in our build environment. So when you're ready, let's crack on with that lesson.